How's it everybody? Today I got a new project to test out a new video format. This time it's an engine rebuild for a Volvo D24 naturally aspirated from a 1984 Volvo 242. And I pulled this bad boy out of a junkyard with 170k on it. So feel free to skip ahead the video to where you see the actual diagnosis. But I think for a project like this it's really important to get a, bigger, a bit of background on it before you just jump in. Now this engine is a 2.4 liter naturally aspirated diesel that made, when new, a whopping 80 horsepower and 103 foot-pounds of torque. And it can be found in the United States in Volvo 240, 740, and 8 series car, 840 series cars. And the most interesting thing about this Volvo engine is that it's actually a Volkswagen engine. It was used mostly in commercial powertrain Volkswagen European vehicles. And you can think of this D24 as the six cylinder larger brother to the very popular Volkswagen 1.6D four cylinder. And the D24 uses the same valves, pistons, connecting rods, injectors, and the same overall design as the 1.6. So you'll hear me make this comparison very frequently. Now, don't get too excited about the similarity because you can't just drop a D24 into a rabbit for some mini Cummins action. The engine has a different bell housing that's intended for longitudinal mounting. And I think it's important to know all this because there's a lot more information and parts available for the 1.6s and it's a good reference and it'll also help you on these Volvo diesel projects. Unfortunately, most of the issues with this engine also extend from the similarity, similarity to the 1.6s. And long story short, Volkswagen didn't really take the effort to increase the strength of the engine when they enlarged it. And I will explain this in greater detail as I diagnose the engine. For now, let's continue on. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to see if the engine rotates. This is something you want to do for pretty much anyone. And you just stick any socket on the crankshaft. This one is a 27 millimeter. And see if the engine rotates. And it looks like it doesn't. This bad boy is pretty stuck. So no dice there. Now we're taking a look at the head gasket. That is another point of failure for this really long car. And you can see between the lighter aluminum and the darker cast iron, it all looks fine. We're really concerned about the back view cylinders. Okay, looks a little dirtier there. I'm having some trouble seeing under the exhaust manifold. A little dirty, but that's fine. But we're not to the last few cylinders yet. Uh-oh, here it comes. Come on, you can figure it out. And there we go. Gross wetness on the back. Here's the front. Here's our good head gasket. There's the back, the bad part. <laughs> you can really see it. So now I want to check out the camshaft, another point of failure on this car. And usually you could just sort of rotate the engine around and see if the injection pump pulley on the back moves. But because the engine's locked up, we're going to have to take off the valve cover and actually look at it. These are 10 millimeter bolts or nuts, excuse me, so we're going to take them all off. It's pretty tedious. You'll also want to be careful to not drop the nuts back behind the timing cover. I've already done that once. And the best way to do it would probably be an extra long 10 millimeter quarter inch drive, but that's not what I have to work with. There we go, we got them all. These 1.6s and D24s are held down by these long clamps. When you reinstall them, you'll want them to be in a U shape. So lifting up towards the ends. And now we'll take off the valve cover. Just undo this hose. And when I get it off, I'll just go over what we're looking at in greater detail because it's kind of hard to see from this angle. Okay, so now here we can see a view of our D24 cylinder head, specifically looking at the cam, and it does not look like it's cracked, so that's good. And from this view, I think I could really explain to you some of the issues that this um, cylinder head has in comparison to the 
on the upper half of the screen, you could see a D24 cylinder head and cam, and on the lower half, you could see a 1.6D. Now, if you take a look at the cam bearings, for the D24, you have one, two, three, four cam bearings holding our camshaft down, and for a 1.6, you actually have five. So on top of the cylinder head being longer, you also have less bearings <laughs> holding our cam down. Between the um, 1.6, you can see that each cylinder is, has a cam bearing on either side. Now on the D24, there are two cylinders between each sets of cam bearings. So that's where the issue comes. It can crack. And on top of that, the 1.6 doesn't have any accessories driving it. Now here I have highlighted some of the accessories driven off of the D24 camshaft. On the way far end of it, there's a whole nother gear, and that runs the injection pump. And an injection pump isn't the easiest thing to run. And on top of that, halfway through the cylinder head is the vacuum pump. And none of those things are on the 1.6. So on top of it being very long, it also has less support and there's also accessories being driven off the end so it's twisting it as well and you can also see the source of our head gasket failure right here i have highlighted in the back half of the engine this is about where our head gasket leak is and way up there on the left of the screen in front of the engine that's where the water pump is so if you have a head gasket failure that's the place to look for it. It's just kind of the name of the beast with these long straight six engines. That'll be a little bit hotter than the rest of the engine and that is your point of failure. Now you might be asking, what are my plans for this thing? Well, it's got the leaky head gasket and it's locked up, so it's gonna need a rebuild. And I think it's a pretty interesting engine, so I'd like to just crack into it and rebuild it anyway. I have about a $500 budget for this rebuild, and it'd be nice with that money to be able to turbo it, but I don't think so. I think at the very least I'm going to want to put some head studs in, and that will strengthen the head and make it so we're less likely to have head gasket failure in future. As for what I'm going to put it in, well, I have a very specific swap in mind, but I don't want to go ahead and get a car and get involved in a whole nother project when the motor may not be any good. So I'm gonna rebuild the motor, and if my interest is gone, then I'll just sell the motor. But if not, then it'll be another series of videos and another another project to add to the pile. Stay tuned.